how you look. Do you lie? Stockings? Oh, straighten that seam. Cassie? Very good. Now, just a little powder on both them noses. We'll be all ready to go. Why does everything west of the Mississippi have to smell like cows? Never mind about that. Just turn off them noses, turn on them smiles, we're all ready to go. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> A little, oh, all right, that's fine, but make it a little more to the left. Oh, no, no, not your left, my left. There you are, all right. Now, that's too much. Back up. Jelly, we're not placing a sundial. Just a fairly close position will be fine. Well, I'm not going to be responsible for any sloppy work. Jelly, you're not responsible for any work at all. Come on, Jelly. Let's not take all day. All right, mark it there. Yeah. Hold it. There. Hey. You got company. Well, well. Four handsome men. Well, that's my kind of welcoming committee. Hello, Murdoch. Angel. Ah. Well, a bad penny had to show up sooner or later. Come on out, girls. Uh, this is Cassie and uh, July. This is Murdoch Lancer, the man I hey, told Joe. you about, and uh, his sons. I'll just take a wild guess. Uh, you're Johnny. And uh, Scott? Right. Pleasure. Pleased to meet you. Place looks lovely, Murdoch. <laughs> well, I guess I know everybody but you, good looking. Name's Jelly Hoskins. Pleased. Likewise. Well, Angel, this is quite a surprise. The last I heard, you were back east. Oh, I've been most everywhere, Murdoch. Got a little traveling show with the girls here. Got to keep moving to find ourselves an audience. So you're just passing through? You might say that. But I knew I couldn't come this close and not stop by to see an old friend. I'm glad you did. Good. Then you won't mind us Staying over for a few days to rest up, maybe? Jelly, would you uh, take care of the horses? Scott, Johnny, would you take the luggage upstairs, please? Right. Thought I heard something. Darling, we have guests. Oh, how nice. Teresa, this is an old friend, Miss Angel Day. And these are her companions, Cassie and July. I'm very happy to meet you. I'm very happy to meet you, too, Teresa. This way, ladies. We'll show you around. Thank you. Can you let me help you with Oh, no, no. no. The sign on the wagon says you do songs and dances. That's right, honey. My, my. Grown up. Pretty. Teresa, would you see there's fresh linen in the guest rooms, please? Sure. Excuse me. It's quite a 
about a young lady? Yes. And it took a lot of care and concern to make her that way. Painted up and flouncing around like the Queen of Sheba. Oh, I've seen women like that plenty of times. They'll clean out a man's pockets while he's standing there grinning. They're not gonna catch me in the trap. What kind of a trap's that? Oh, what do you mean, sneaking up on me like that? Well, now, nobody's sneaking up on you, Jelly. You were just talking so loud you didn't hear us. Well, now, you take my advice, and you give them kind of women a wide path. <laughs> why is that? Well, because they're pure trouble, that's why. Well, I never considered a couple of pretty girls exactly trouble. Well, that's maybe because you ain't been around enough of them. Well, I have, and I can tell you plenty. Why, when they get painted up and feathered out like that, they're out to skin anybody they can get their paws on. Yeah. Well, I'm sure glad you warned us, Jelly. Well, just doing my duty. See, I'm glad you told us that, Jelly. We, we could have made a terrible mistake. Yeah, well, it ain't ever too late to learn. Uh, Jelly, by the way, would you do us a favor and hook up the spring wagon? Yeah, but what? You fellas going to town? Uh, no, we're going to take those girls for a ride around the ranch. Yeah, and uh, dust it off and make it look real nice, okay? Scott will probably keep them out all day. Oh, it won't hurt. My girls know how to take care of themselves. Oh, how pretty. You like them? Mm -hmm. They're part of the act. You gotta be able to see us up there on that stage. You're all so lucky getting to travel around the country. <laughs> I don't know about that lucky part. We sometimes get tired moving around. Oh, I wouldn't. I'd never get tired of uh, seeing new places and doing exciting things. Really? It must be wonderful to, to have all these pretty things around you all the time. Here. Here, try it on. Oh, no, I couldn't. Oh, go on. At least hold it up and look at yourself in the mirror, see how you look. Maybe if I was a little taller and all, I... Oh, honey. You look like fresh strawberries and cream. You put on some high-heeled shoes, you'd be plenty tall enough. Oh, that, that wouldn't be very good around here. Oh? Murdoch keeping the tight rope around you? No, not exactly. I, I'm really very happy. It's just that, well, I never thought much about anything except living on a ranch. Well, maybe it's about time you did. You think so? Sure. What are these for? Oh, they're... They're part of the act. Once upon a time, I didn't need funny apples. You're sad. Did I say something? Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. If that mockingbird don't sing, 
Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. If that diamond ring turns glass, Mama's gonna buy you a looking glass. If that looking glass gets broke, Mama's gonna buy you a billy goat. If that billy goat don't go, Mama's gonna buy you a horse and cart. If that horse and cart fall down, you'll still be the sweetest little baby in town. Come in. Uh, Teresa, honey, would you leave us alone for a few minutes? What do you want, Angel? Why'd you come back? I don't want any trouble. Wish I could believe that. Don't you forget something, Murdoch. I've got rights. Teresa's my kid, not yours. Oh, you've got no rights. You surrendered those, Angel, when you ran off and left Paul with a baby to take care of. Still passing judgment, I see. Passing judgment is not my concern. Teresa is. As far as she's concerned, her mother died at childbirth. How convenient. Did she die a sainted woman? Wouldn't have done any good to tell her the truth. Maybe we ought to find out. No more talk. No more singing. No more friendly charm. I want you and your sunshine girls packed up and out of here by tomorrow. Is that understood? Sure, my dad. But tomorrow's a long way off. Carl Bolton. This is Marshal Thurman from Sacramento. Huh? Mr. Bolton, Marshal. Uh, these are my boys, Johnny and Scott. Hello. What can I do for you? I, uh, I've got a paper here. Excuse me, Marshal. But I'm sure Mr. Lancer would uh, prefer to discuss this matter inside where we uh, can all be more comfortable. Well, of course. My study, right this way. Thank you. And then there's a problem of making a new home for the girl. Believe me, it hasn't been an easy decision. You see, Mr. Lancer, in the eyes of the law, Teresa's legal guardianship is clouded and uncertain. Of course, you realize the girl's welfare is an important consideration in making this decision. Even now, I still wonder whether my wife can ever hope to achieve love and respect from her own daughter after all these years. And I'm sure you can all understand that I must consider my wife's feelings above everyone else's. These have been very lonely and unhappy years for my wife, Angel. But she's paid a price. And now the law wants her to have her daughter back. And that's the way it should be. You know, I don't care what the law says. Nobody takes Teresa out of here, not unless she wants to go. Scott, Johnny. Uh, you can see why, Mr. Lance, I felt it necessary to bring along the marshal. I'll have a look at that document. It's a court order, all legal, signed by Judge Rollins. Murdoch? All signed and legal, just like he says. 
There's nothing we can do about it. You gonna let a piece of paper decide that? You aiming to go against a federal court order? Yeah, if I have to. No, Johnny, it's not the way to do it. You know, I had a feeling we could settle everything on a very friendly basis. Don't count yourself a friend, Walton. Angel? Teresa has lived on this ranch for most of her life. It's all she's had. It's all she knows. You're not going to pack her up and take her away from here like she was a sack of grain. She's my kid. She belongs with me. Does she? Going from town to town, leading your kind of a life? Is that what you really want for your own child? There's nothing wrong with that. Teresa admires it. She told me so. She thinks it's exciting. Oh, yes. You made sure of that. Well, it's all settled. There's nothing more to say. Oh, yes, there is. There's a lot more to say. Somebody's going to have to tell her the truth. <laughs> Note said she was leaving for good, and that nothing that Paul could do would persuade her to come back. Well, your daddy suffered more than if she had put a bullet in his back. He loved Angel that much, no matter how she felt about him. It took all the strength I could muster to keep him from going after the man and killing him. But all these years, you, you let me put flowers on a grave. Pretending it was hurt. <sighs> well, I didn't want to lie to you, darling, but there's one thing you have to understand. You see, every day since your father died has been a challenge to me. I try to get for you everything that's right and good. Paul wanted it that way, and so do I. <laughs> Rudolph, I'm so scared. You won't have to stay with her any longer. It's absolutely necessary. But you said there wasn't anything you could do. I said there was nothing I could do at the moment, but that doesn't mean forever. Oh, no, sir. Whatever, whatever it takes. Any laws that have to be twisted, I'll twist them. I'll find some way to get you back home. That's a promise. You remember that. You'll just be fine. Now, you just take care of yourself. That's all that matters. If I write, will you make sure someone answers? Well, of course, we'll all answer. Or whoever don't, I'll personally take a board to. Now, come on, they're waiting. such an unhappy occasion. You hadn't? No. Well, perhaps uh, something could be worked out. I mean, for the girl's welfare. What kind of a way out? Well, I was only thinking that uh, maybe I could be of some help to discourage my wife's maternal instincts. Of course, that would take uh, considerable effort. Bolton has not waste any more of each other's time. How much? 
You are a very direct man, Mr. Lancer. I said how much? Well, you have quite a ranch here. Big house, all that cattle. Suppose we consider a figure of, say, maybe $5,000. And then you can keep the girl with my heartfelt blessings. Extortion comes high, doesn't it? Angel's broken heart will require a, a lot of mending. Well, even if I agreed with you, I don't keep that kind of money here on the ranch. Oh, how unfortunate. Well, it was just a thought. Probably is better if the girl does come with us. It's been a pleasure, sir. And Bolton. It'll take some time. I'll have to go to Sacramento to the bank. In the meantime, all of you can stay here while I'm gone. Well, thank you kindly for your hospitality, but uh, under the circumstances, I think it would be better if I took my family and uh, moved out. You understand? No, I don't understand. I've agreed to give you the money. Just say that uh, I'm a nervous man. I don't like to wait around too long when I'm holding the winning hand. How will I find you? There's this little um, mining town just the other side of the Nevada border called uh, Potluck. I know the town. I suppose we wait there to hear from you. Three days should be sufficient. Hmm? <laughs> I'll be moving on, Mr. Lancer. Sure appreciate your cooperation. Hold on, Marshal. You're going to have some company. Jelly, saddle some horses. I didn't think we was going to let that slicker take Teresa. That's exactly what we're going to do for now. Scott, I want you to follow them. Don't let Teresa out of your sight for a second. Don't worry. They're headed for potluck. I'll be in touch with you by wire later on. Right. Wait a minute, Scott. I'm going to go with Scott. No, you're coming with me to Sacramento. I still have some political friends. I'm going to pull some strings. Look, and if Mark, that doesn't work, you're going to help me knock a few heads together. All right. I'm going to break that court order. <laughs> Standoffish. She ain't said two words since we left. Uh-huh. Just a poor little babe lost in the wilderness. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go wash your face, honey? It wakes you up, makes you feel better. Take more than that to make me feel better. No need us playing games. I guess Murdoch told you all about me, huh? Yeah. How do you feel about it? I mean, knowing who I am and all. How would you expect me to feel? Pleased and happy? No, I guess not. I was young. Like you, almost, when I ran away from your father. I didn't really know I was doing wrong. Not then. See, before I married him, I'd 
been places I'd seen things. They took me out there to that ranch. It's like, like being buried alive. I wanted excitement, a reason for putting on pretty clothes instead of just entertaining cows and chickens. Can you understand even a little? I don't understand anything about you. Just take your time, honey. Take your time. About my daughter. It's not your daughter. That's merchandise. Five thousand dollars worth. Now, don't you get any ideas about playing mother permanently? Understand? Why should I? Shotgun, where are the girls? They'll be out in a minute. Well, they better hurry or we'll go back and get them. Well, now, take it easy, Rusty. Let me get you another drink. <laughs> Cassie? I think she needs a doctor. I'll decide that. Now, they expect three girls out there. Somebody's got to take a place. That means you. I won't do it. Did you hear what Carl, I said? Carl, please. Angel, shut up! Now, there are plenty of dresses here that should fit you. You take your choice. No. Now, you wouldn't want to disobey your devoted stepfather, now, would you, Teresa? Hmm? I don't have to take orders from you. Did you hear what I said? Oh, She'll do it. Just let me talk to her. She'll do it. Now, she better be out there in five minutes. Oh, please, honey. Do what he says. You don't have to sing or dance or nothing like that. Just walk around and look pretty. Oh, please, honey. I know how Carl can be sometimes. If you don't want to do it for me, do it for yourself. I guess that's why you wanted me, isn't it? So I could carry on the family tradition. Mr. Lancer, this is a pleasant surprise. Yes, I'm sure it is. Have you come to see our little show? You might see that. Uh -huh. You planning to be in town long? 
long as I have to. Be nice to him. First time for anything always seems worse than it is. Hi, sweetie. Having a good time? Just go on and enjoy yourself. Hey, where are you going, sugar? Let's go! Come on. Who started all this? They ganged up on him. He didn't have a chance. Is there another side to the story? Oh, yes, yeah, Sheriff. I saw the whole thing. I was just about to start my act when this man came in and started looking for a fight. So naturally, the boys had to defend themselves. Oh, that's a lie. He came looking for me. She belonged to you, mister? Oh, yes. That's my uh, stepdaughter, as a matter of fact. As you can see, she's a little upset, but there's no need to be concerned. Angel, why don't you make sure that the sheriff gets a good seat right down front for the next show? Well, right? that's real kind of you, but I'm on duty here tonight. Uh, all right, let's pick him up and haul him over to jail. He can sleep it off. Larry, Pete. No, I don't want you to take him. Uh, what's this? Another one of your husband's tricks? Oh, he doesn't even know I'm here. Where's Teresa? She's back at the saloon. Being pawed over like some pet animal. Gotta believe me. I didn't want nothing like this to happen. Sure. That's why you went and got a court order to take custody of her. It was Carl. He saw a chance for some easy money. And little mother went right along with it. Lancer. Wire came in for you late last night. Figured you wasn't in much of a condition then to read it. Thanks for your concern, Sheriff. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna have to ask you to finish up here. You ain't supposed to have more than five minutes. I'll be right out here. Anyway, I want you to know I'm sorry. I thought it wouldn't make any difference if I saw Teresa again after all these years. Angel. You can still help Teresa if you want to. I've never wanted anything more in my life. You can start by getting me some bail money. Someone uh, cleaned me out last night. Girl knows how to put something away for emergencies. It's all right, gentlemen. It's just part of the show. Rosie Apple. <laughs> hey there, 
big boy. How's about a bite? May I tempt you with a big red rosy apple? Let me be your pippin for tonight. I'll be true, I'll never be misleading. We can be like Adam and Eve walking in the Garden of Eden. May I tempt you with a big red rosy apple? Cause you're the apple of my eye, my, my. You're the apple of my eye, not you. You're could deafen me with all that noise. Now, uh, the management don't make no money as long as you just sit around watching, so uh, everybody up to the bar. And don't forget to buy something. Wait a minute, honey. Seems to me I saw a tear in your dress somewhere about here. What are you doing? Excusing us from the party for a while. Just keep moving, don't ask any questions. Where are you two going? To sew up Teresa's dress, if it's all right. Don't take all night. Customers get lonely. Well, they'll live. Hold it. Where are you taking the little doll? One side, lover boy. I've got great news. Murdoch obtained the legal writ. He and Johnny are waiting at the California line. Once across that line, you're home for good. But, Angel, what about you? Oh, never mind about me. Go on, get going. Both of you. Should be cold. Thanks, Angel. Goodbye. dress. We'll be out as soon as we can. Well, the girl seems to be gone. That's right, Carl. You're too late. I'm just gonna have to go after Teresa. But first, I have some family business to take care of. Please, Carl, don't hurt me. Don't hurt you? Haven't you tried to hurt me? Your husband? That girl is worth $5,000. Now, you know how much that money means to me. What time is it, Myrna? It's 
breakfast five minutes later than it was the last time I looked. It's almost nine. I thought they were supposed to be here by now. They were. Well, you know, I don't like this waiting around. Why don't I take a ride in the potluck? No, this, uh, this paper you went to all the trouble to get ain't gonna be worth cut grass if you take that girl in another state. She's gotta cross this line before you have any say. Now you're gonna go and break the law when you kept it legal this far? He's right, Johnny. Let's give Scott just a little more time. You disappoint me, old lady. But then you always have. Carl, please let her go. Carl. Carl. Teresa, you forgot to say goodbye. I'm taking her home with me, Bolton. Not unless you're prepared to do it with a bullet in your gut. Please, Scott, don't do anything. I'll go with him. Now, that's a very sensible attitude. All right, Lancer. Get out of the wagon. Slowly. Take off your gun belt. Angel! Teresa, get out! Don't forget that paper. Being legal, don't get the job done. Down where it's safe. No, not without you. Come on.
honey. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Darling, I've got the paper. We're taking you back home with us. That is, if you want to go. Go on with them, honey. I got places to go and things to do. Don't wait on me. I, I'm gonna go take a last look at Carl. I'll get that handsome marshal to escort me back to Potluck. You mean you... You can walk away? Just like that? See you around, honey. Before. Well, to tell you the truth, honey, it's just so good to have you back home. Well, it's good to be home. Thank mm -hmm. you. 